Are you, sir? So I'm Bob Lamb. Back door, yeah. sir. Walked out the back door. And I was going to read it, too. They were on TV. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the April 1st, 2009 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. I also want to give a special welcome to the members of Leadership Rutherford that are in the audience tonight. So welcome to all you folks. The first item on the agenda tonight is to approve the minutes of March 18th, 2009. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, I'll declare them approved as submitted. We have three public hearings scheduled this evening, the first of which is a zoning request for to rezone 17.81 acres located west of Dill Lane from RS10 to PRD, Eagle Summit Partners is the applicant. Good evening. How are you, Ms. Logan? Thank you, Chairman Lamb and Planning Commission members. You have before you a request to rezone property from RS10 to PRD. It's approximately 17.81 acres. It's located along the western side of Dill Lane, just south of Mercury Boulevard. If you'd like to direct your attention to the map, I'll tell you the surrounding zoning. To the west are single family, developed single family subdivisions. They're zoned RS10 and RS15. To the south is the Grace Baptist Church, also zoned RS10 and single family subdivisions. Just to the east, the property zone PCD is the location of the new tractor supply. And to the south of that are some multifamily unit, apartment units. To the north are two single family houses and then the newly constructed First National Bank, which is zone CH. Also to the north are more properties zone CH and RM16. The request is to rezone the subject area from RS10 to PRD, Planned Residential District, to allow the construction of 14 three-story apartment buildings for a total of maximum density of 260 dwelling units on the 17.81 acres. The property will also have a maintenance building, a clubhouse with a pool, and a hot tub, a basketball court, sand volleyball pit, and a minim minimum of five barbecue grills. The de developer has stated to Planning Commission and to staff that the target demographic for these units are MTSU students since it's so so lo located so closely to the university. You may recall from when we first saw this agenda item and we were going to schedule for public hearing, there were several concerns that staff had and Planning Commission had with the plan as submitted. The pattern books before you have made changes and addressed those concerns that we have. You also have, in addition to the pattern book, an addendum submitted by the applicant. In this addendum, uh, the applicant has added, added a solid PVC fence along this line to screen the parking area from these existing homes. You'll note that the, the fence doesn't exist, or in the addendum, it didn't look like the applicant has put in the fence along this property line. Staff wanted to get that cleared up and see why, since there's also going to be parking here that the headlights may glare into that, par into that single family lot. The applicant has held a neighborhood meeting, as you suggested, and it was on March 16, 2009, at the Hobgood Elementary School. It was well attended by interested neighbors. The applicant's representative, Mr. Matt Taylor, is here this evening, and I believe he has a short presentation for you, after which you should conduct a public hearing. Staff will be available to answer questions you may have either before or after the public hearing. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Ely. Mr. Cantrell, how are you? <laughs> Good evening, Plan Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, as Ms. Ely said, I'm Matt Taylor. Uh, I've got a... Uh, brief presentation for you to go over the highlights of the property and the project uh, as we propose them. If you would go ahead and put the presentation up on the screen. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, accompanied tonight by Mr. Hal Marston and Mike Piper, the developers of the project, and we're here to pr propose to you uh, a rezoning for the reserve at Dill Lane, a student housing development. The property is located along the west side of Dill Lane and to the south of Mercury Boulevard. Uh, the property is less than a mile away from MTSU, which makes it really an ideal location in our mind for a student housing development. The property is just under 18 acres in size and is currently zoned RS10, which will allow for single family detached uh, units to be built. We're requesting a rezoning to a planned residential district to allow for 260 townhouse style uh, apartment units. Uh, our market there, or Unit demographic would be 121 bedrooms, 122 bedrooms, and then 24 bedrooms for, for a total density of 14.6 units per acre. 
Um, with those kind of bedrooms, we really feel like the price point on the monthly rental will uh, really drive out a lot of the students and gear it more toward upperclassmen and uh, graduate students, make it for a low, more low-key, uh, nicer development. The site currently drains from Dill Lane toward the rear and eventually north under Mercury, Lane, under Mercury Boulevard and into the headwaters of Sinking Creek. Uh, utilities will be extended into the property at the cost of the developer. Merciful Water and Sewer will be providing the sewer, which is available along the western property line. CUD will be providing fire protection water as well as domestic and is available to the south of the property. And then MED will be providing our electric service, which is located along Dale Lane currently. Our existing uses, as Ms. Ely said, are shown here, uh, mainly for all residential single family along the west and to the south, and then to the north and to the west, made up more of multifamily and commercial zoning. So we feel like our, our zoning will actually act as a nice transitional zoning from that heavier use of commercial over to the single family. The site itself is primarily open pasture land with a few scrub areas in the rear, along with a uh, distinct tree line that cuts the property in half, along with some existing homes along the frontage. Uh, here is looking north along Dill Lane from the southern portion just beyond the southern part of our property. Here are the existing structures, along with a barn behind those. All three are proposed to be removed. Uh, here's that tree line, as well as some of the existing cover on site. One of the more important parts of our design and of the property itself were the buffers around the, the existing buffers around our property lines. Currently, all, almost all the adjoiners have existing tree lines and existing fence lines uh, between us and them. We propose to leave all those in place and, uh, and where necessary we'll supplement them uh, to really provide a nice buffer and screening. Uh, here I've got a couple of pictures. This is our northeast corner uh, where the two existing residences are. Uh, here you've got some nice tall mature pines but they don't provide much ground cover or ground screening. We're going to add to that provide some nice evergreens there, along with a fence at the request of those neighbors that Miss Ely mentioned earlier. Uh, our northern property line that we share with other multifamily and commercial zonings, um, we have some tall, mature, deciduous trees that we want to keep, along with some sparse cedars. There's also a lot of undergrowth here that we'd like to clean up, make it a little bit more manicured, but we will be keeping the mature trees here. Uh, another picture of our northern property line. The western property line is one of our more sensitive areas. There are several existing homes in this area. And as you can see here, this picture was taken in the dead of winter, uh, December 1st of January. It's already providing a good screen then. It's only going to get better in the summertime. So we want to leave that as is and not disturb it, uh, except for where we have to connect to the road and utilities on that side. Our southern property line is a little bit more sparse. It will require more supplementation by our, on our part. Uh, we will be providing low-level evergreens, six to eight feet tall, um, to help buffer that, as well as keep the existing vegetation that's there now. Uh, the design of the site itself, we try to create a nice impact as soon as you come into the site with signage and uh, gated entry and uh, nice, nicely designed clubhouse. After you get past the gates, you have 14 buildings. They're all three-story. They contain all of our units. All those buildings have the one and two bedrooms, except for the two in the most, most northeastern corner, the upper right here. Those have our four bedroom units. We placed them there, uh, trying to be sensitive to our existing single family residences in the lower left hand corner of this, the, north, the southwest corner. That's where the highest density of our single family neighbors are. Other things we've done to try to buffer them in that area is keep our buildings at least 50 feet off the property line. Uh, that does a couple of things. It gets us away from them. Uh, the farther your distance is, the less impact that you're going to have, period. It also allows us to have little to no impact on the existing vegetation, uh, guaranteeing that that will remain, and then we'll be able to supplement that, as, as mentioned earlier. In addition, we've put our parking on the inside of our buildings. That tends to be your noise generator in these developments, so we want to keep as much noise away from our neighbors as possible. Uh, some of the standards that we're going to have on the site, we are going to meet the GDO lighting standards. We don't need lighting uh, spilling over to our neighbors. We're going to have approximately 50% open space. 
Um, that'll be included in our amenities, some unstructured amenities, and uh, our pond as well. Our uh, waste management program, I believe, was the question in our workshop. The way that'll work is it'll consist, the major dis uh, refusal point is the compactor, but the residents really won't interact with that much. They'll be using the remote trash receptacles around the site. That's there for their convenience to encourage them to actually get the trash where it belongs instead of out in the yard or at their front doors. Uh, instead of being a detriment to this development, uh, the developer has used this in other developments and been very successful uh, for this target group. Uh, in addition, as Ms. Ely mentioned, at the neighborhood meeting, the uh, neighbors in the northeast corner uh, approached the developer and asked that he provide a fence along the north-south property line. Uh, the developer offered uh, to do the other, but this was their real concern. They felt like that the headlights shining in here would be shining into their house and into their windows and it would affect their quality of life. So they asked along this property line, and the developer was happy to achieve that. In addition, uh, Mr. Dooley, which is a neighbor in the southwest corner, has asked that the developer replace a chain link fence um, in that area, and the developer is fully agreeable to that as well to act as a further barrier. Our access points will have one primary access point, and that'll come off of Deal Lane. Um, we will be putting, we're proposing a right turn lane into the site there as well as improvements from the southern portion of our property line all the way back to Mercury Boulevard, consisting of curb and gutter, as well as sidewalks along our front end and in front of the bank. We have uh, left out the sidewalks in front of the two existing residences because we have conflicts with power poles, and if those ever redevelop, uh, they would get torn out more than likely. It just makes sense to put them in with any redevelopment there. We do have a secondary access point coming off of Atlas, uh, however, that'll be purely for emergency access. It'll have a crash gate installed, and that was put in at the request of the city planning staff, and I believe it's been well received by the fire department, as it'll be used for them for turning around as well as for sanitary services as well. Our landscaping was a big portion of our design. Um, you can see in your booklet along our southern and our western property lines, we're going to have a type C landscape buffer that will be achieved through the existing vegetation or newly proposed or a combination of the two. Uh, we're going to have the same along our north northeastern boundary lines around our uh, existing neighbors there in addition to the fence. However, we still wanted to have nice landscaping internal to the site, so we're going to have nice ornamentals and foundation plantings all the way around our buildings. Uh, to really make it a welcome home and uh, very appealing to our residents. A uh, small pallet, we're going to have some maples as well as some magnolias and some red buds, some abelias, as well as some rose bushes. That's a small sample of our pallet, a more detailed sampling is included in your pattern book. Uh, the buildings were designed to uh, really uh, be appealing to the eye. Um, some of that was achieved through multiple colors and multiple materials. Uh, we tried to make each section look a little bit different, like they're separate buildings or units instead of one big bu building. Uh, tried to achieve that by insetting every other every other unit, as well as create some nice entryway features with the use of a gable feature. And using quality materials, going to have at least 45% brick around the building, complemented by cement boarding, board siding and asphalt shingles. Vinyl siding be used in the trim and soffit areas. Um, here's the rear of the one and two bedrooms and the front of the four bedroom units. Really the only difference between the fronts is that the four bedrooms will have two bedrooms in the in or two doorways in the entryway instead of just one on the one bedroom, one or two bedrooms. And here are the rear. Uh, you'll notice we do have some porch or a balcony type features at the rear. We have uh, restricted those to the second to the second floor and not the third. That was uh, really more of trying to get privacy for our neighbors. Uh, we could have went to the third, but the farther up you go, the farther you can see. Really feel like we want an amenity for our residents, but we don't want to impact the neighbors by going up that extra floor either. 
Uh, our amenities on site, we like to say that they start at the front door with the signage, followed up by some nice landscaping and the medians and all around, along with pedestrian scale lighting that will help complement the clubhouse and the gated entry. On site, a good portion of our amenities are unstructured uh, by way of large green spaces that the residents will be able to use for uh, just picnics or games, just anything that they feel like doing. Uh, some of our larger structured amenities will include a basketball court regulation size, along with a regulation size volleyball pit, complete with the net, and then several locations for the grills and the park benches that uh, uh, will we'll supplement those with landscaping and provide some nice shade and uh, have kind of some uh, small pocket parks around the side. Uh, our, uh, probably our biggest and uh, Biggest draw as far as the structured amenity will come in the form of the clubhouse. It'll be over 5,000 square feet. It'll have our pool and spa there as well, along with a mailbox kiosk. Uh, internally, we'll have things such as a wee room, a uh, theater, along with a tanning room, and a coffee bar, along with a pool, pool table and foosball, and a full model, working model. Again, I'm Matt Taylor. If you've got any questions for myself or the developers, either one of us would be glad to try to answer those. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? You may go ahead and ask a couple. Yes, go ahead. Um, just, just a couple of questions. I want to mm -hmm. confirm that I understand where the fencing is actually going. Is it? The, I, I, I'm just I'm lost on that. The, just right there, and that is the PVC fence yes, or the that's the iron? solid. That's the solid PVC fence okay. to block the headlights. Okay. Then down in the southwest corner, right there, Mr. Dooley has asked that the developer replace some broken or missing chain, chain link fence to match uh -huh. what he has in the rest of his yard. The developer is amenable to that as well. And is that the one that I saw that's kind of a wrought iron look and it says something about that the gates will match that? No, ma'am. That, that'll be what goes uh, along our frontage. What, what's going back there is just a strictly uh, kind of the gray chain link conventional okay, that you see. Sure. So just along the road. Ms. Johnson, Ms. last time uh, for Mr. Dillon, uh -huh. I think that would work out just before the meeting tonight. Okay. 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 That, that's fine. I just... I was getting lost because I'm, uh, if you don't have the little arrow showing me north, and I'm, I was lost on where I was, uh, which corner we were talking about. Jones, the fence that I had mentioned was along this. Now, is that, because so is there a fence there or is there not a fence there? There's not currently. And they didn't, though they were not interested in, in that, the neighbors? I don't know that the neighbor fully understood, but the parking yeah, it's, it's, point directly into that lot, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know. They didn't ask for it, but I don't know that they wouldn't want it. It makes sense to me. At least just along the park, you know, up through where the parking is. Ms. Well, Jones, no, but then the curve is. I'm sorry yes, to interrupt you. Uh, my name's Hal Marston. I'm uh, the developer on the project. And we have talked to the two homeowners that are in that little pocket uh, adjoining the property. And they had requested the uh, the southernmost property edge have a six foot solid PVC screening uh, screening fence in order to block any headlights, and we would not have a problem if uh, uh, you know if uh, if they see on their side a requirement for it to also be on the side. Although I will tell you that at the neighborhood meeting. When we discussed it, uh, I think they were mainly concerned about traffic lights that would be coming into the rear of their home as opposed to the side. But uh, that, that would not be a difficult thing for us to do. The chain link fence, which is in the southwest portion, has to do with Mr. Dooley's property, and we, uh, we talked before the, the hearing tonight. Mr. Dooley made us aware that when uh, the new sewer lines were put in along the west side of the property, uh, abutting his property, that uh, the fence that he had, that portion of the fence along uh, the property line was taken out. So what he's asked is that we go in, and we certainly are more than happy to do it. We weren't even aware that 
at least on his property, uh, the fence had been removed. Now the other properties still have the existing chain link fence, and what we would do is, is put that in uh, back in according to what he's requested. So we would be amenable to doing that, uh, and we would also be amenable if uh, it, it becomes an issue and, and is any concern whatsoever in putting the, uh, the white PVC fence along the parking uh, that would be adjoining to the, the two homes there uh, on the what would amount to kind of their north um, uh, well it would be uh, it would be the north east side of our property uh, immediately abutting the uh, the parking itself the main concern was headlights from from automobiles yes. It's, uh, do you, I'm sorry. Do you know if this property owner is here tonight? Yes, I believe they are. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll follow yeah, the public we hearing. We'll, we'll know more about their desires, I'll say. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else from Mr. Taylor? Well, I think the, the gate was the other question I was just going to ask about, and that may answer the question about the fence, because if that gate that when you turn in is just for emergency, access that's if you took a right after you turned in then there are not going to be cars actually going in that direction the only cars that would ever be coming back around this back corner back here is if somebody is you know pulling in and out of the clubhouse at night is when i mean so that's not as yeah let's say it's yeah mm -hmm. so really the it'll be in and out just that one access point yes yeah. Really? The gate over there is not going to be a gate that's open. Is that a crash gate? As right. Well? It, well, it won't be a crash gate. It'll uh, it'll be sim. It'll be the same material that we have uh, going into the development for our residents. So it'll be a little bit nicer because it's at the front. But it will be for emergencies only. It, it won't have an access for the residents. It'll be siren or yelp mode uh, that the firefighters can open. Okay. It'll be restricted to access again, so you won't have any circulation through that, okay. except for emergency purposes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I right. appreciate it. There's no questions for the developer or Ms. Ely. We'll uh, go into the public hearing portion of this proposal. Uh, before I open the public hearing, I'll briefly go over the rules that we conduct our public hearings by. We will open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. If you do wish to speak, come to the microphone at the podium, state your name, and give your address if you would, please. Keep your comments to no more than three minutes because we have numerous people that may like to speak following you. If you have questions, we'll make note of those questions and try to answer them at the conclusion of the public hearing. Make all your comments and questions to the Planning Commission <coughs> itself and not to other members of the audience. All that being said, I'll open the public hearing this time. Ask anybody to come forward that'd like to speak. <coughs> My name is Jim Dooley, 2007 Wren Street, and uh, I want a bigger fence. I want it about 12 feet tall, two inches or two feet wide, and glass over the top of it. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is the normally I would be in protest of anything that would be adding to our neighborhood or uh, not adding to but not enriching it and we've seen over the 35 years that we've been around some things that haven't enriched it it's um, it may be an overstatement to say something like this would be uh, adding to my property value but I don't think it's going to take away from it and uh, I'm not here to sing anybody's praises other than to say they could have done something a whole lot less than this and gotten by with it. Uh, in fact, what's going to happen is I think if they go through with everything they say they're going to do, which I have no reason to believe that they won't, they will enhance the area. All you got to do is go around for a little while and you'll see average to lower class type structures. And they certainly don't add. So. I'm just here to voice some uh, some pleasure with it for a change. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Anybody else? 
Hello, I'm Andy Landrum. I live in the property uh, where the fence was being discussed a while ago. So I was, we had talked about going across the back of the property. I mean, I wouldn't oppose it coming down the side, but I wouldn't want it any further than my backyard because I don't want that fence to block the views down the road. You know. But if they need to turn it down the side, that's fine. It's, I'd ask that they wouldn't go much further than my backyard or my fence. We don't have any windows on that end of the house. So that... And the way they talk with the parking lot there, it's not it's not going to be used. Mr. Landrum, would you want it stopping at the, say, a point even with the back corner of your house or maybe the front corner of the house? Uh, probably the back. I've got a chain link fence around in my backyard right now, and, I mean, that would be fine if they need to do okay. that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? My name is Corrine Zorn and I live at 407 Venus Place. I have left several petitions with Mr. Adelot and with the mayor where our neighbors are very concerned about water. That creek area is never cleaned. I'm not saying anybody dumps. It's just mother nature. It's just trees that fall. My neighbor and I have tried from the local level to the federal level to have that creek cleaned and no one will touch it. But water is our concern. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thorne. Anybody else? And Ms. Ely handed out the petition that Ms. Zorn gave us at the neighborhood meeting. So she's going to pass it around so you can see the copy. But I think Ms. Zorn was also talking about over the last 20 years that she's or, or so she's she's had frequent concerns about the drainage back there and different times she's had different petitions okay. nobody else <clears throat> my name is Connie Pratula and I live at 411 Venus I too am concerned about the creek your detailed map does not show the creek. It may be exact, it may be from a satellite, but it does not show the creek. If that creek floods anymore, it'll flood my house further down. It's the same creek that goes across the campus. It's Sinking Creek. If they have to build, to cross over from Atlas, they'll have to cross over the creek to get to their emergency turnaround station. How are they going to fix the creek from there? I'd be interested to know. Thank you, sirs and ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing. Questions or comments from members of the Planning Commission? Chairman Lim, let me go ahead and address the one question Ms. Yes, had uh, about the drainage. Um, first of all, she is absolutely correct. This is the headwaters of the Sinking Creek. Sinking Creek does wrap around to the um, east of the lots that front on Venus Place and uh, up to the uh, to the north of this property. Uh, the uh, creek channel through there, I think Ms. Uh, Zorn characterized it probably as, as well as I could, maybe better than I could. Uh, it's a channel that um, has a lot of debris in it. A lot of it is Mother Nature's doing. And I think you all are, are well aware from your time on the Planning Commission that water bodies have a uh, have a uh, almost a sacred stance with some agencies, and you just can't get in there and tinker with them. We can't send a dozer in and start doing clearing because the, the laws will not allow us to do that. Uh, with that said, I, I do want to assure those who are watching and those who are um, here tonight that we're uh, concerned about the drainage that, that will be uh, impacted their neighborhood and as we review the development plans that's something that our engineering department is going to take a very long hard look at in those plans in our initial meetings with this developer that was one of the subjects that we discussed that drainage was a concern in this area that the property to the north there will be constructing a large detention basin on this property I call it a detention basin because I think that is the correct terminology it's going to serve two purposes. Uh, one, there will be a water quality element. We require developers to um, 
improve their water quality or at least to mitigate their impact during development and through the future management of their site. So there will be a water quality aspect to this detention basin. Second, there will be a, a use for uh, volume. Since the uh, creek downstream is what I think Mr. Huddleston refers to as a volume sensitive stream, uh, we want to make sure that there's the adequate capacity to hold the, the storm waters and let it out uh, appropriately. Uh, there's quite a bit of water that passes across this site, and it'll, it will have to continue to be able to cross. And uh, um, Ms. Uh, Preto's uh, comments about well, what are we going to do, there will be a drainage structure that will cross it probably um, at two or three places across the site. And you can almost see uh, the, the channel on your um, site plans. If you uh, look at the, um, the buildings to the uh, west, I'm going to just kind of turn this around. Maybe you can follow what I'm saying here. Uh, page 21 would be a good page to look at. The, the drainage will come through the site roughly between these two buildings. You see there's a large gap and there's even uh, the parking lot doesn't even extend all the way across. We'll let someone take care of their phone, please. All right. All right, the drainage comes from the south going through the site between those, that large gap in the buildings and then it comes between these two buildings right here and then into the detention pond. Now that's, that's the uh, sort of the sinking creek channel up in this area. So this will be a detention area, and it will outlet somewhere in this area where it continues to, to outlet. Uh, as we get into the, um, after we get through the zoning process, the uh, engineers will do a more, much more detailed survey of the uh, conditions. They will calculate the uh, quantities for the uh, excavations. They'll actually use some of that material to fill the uh, building pads so that they will, will, won't, won't have any holes or huge mounds of dirt left over. Uh, that's an ordinary part of the site plan review process. You as a planning commission will see the plan again when it comes back for site plan review and you'll be able to um, ascertain whether or not your concerns have been met. Okay. Thank you for clarifying those, Mr. Idelot. Comments or questions from the planning commission? Chairman Lamb, I have two. Just one, Joseph, a follow-up to what you just said. If it's draining across this property, does that mean that there's going to be, of course we don't know yet, but does that mean there's going to be a, a drain or a, a culvert that's going across? How's this water going to pass over, or is it going to go underneath the roads? Okay. It will go underneath the parking lot and the road in this area right here. There will be a large culvert. Okay. And the, the road will cross on top of it. All right. And there will be another one over on this side right here. So will it be... a uh, a concrete where the how's the water going to flow across the property then same well, between between those right. there will probably be a large uh, graded swell okay. we discussed the possibility that it will be something that can be maintained very easily in the order of 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 5 to 1 side slope and that means for every foot in rise it goes over okay. 3 foot or so okay it's something that uh, if uh, people are, are playing it saying they're throwing frisbee when it's not raining uh, they will be able to probably uh, continue their game without twisting their ankles or, or falling down and getting hurt because of the slope. Okay. It's something you could easily mow with a lawnmower. My second question is, um, and you please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in our last meeting there was discussion whether <clears throat> Murfreesboro Water or CUD would provide water, and we've determined CUD would do it in this instance, but the, also the discussion was uh, whether there would be enough pressure for the sprinkler system and fire protection. So I guess that is a mute issue now. Uh, actually, uh, it is. Uh, and let me give you an update on that. Thanks for prompting me. The um, engineers and the, have continued to work on the subject. The um, Water and Sewer Department, the City's Fire Department, and Consolidated Utility District have all studied upon this. The, uh, fire um, the fire department met with Consolidated Utility District, and they are convinced that Consolidated Utility District has the ability to provide adequate fire flows for the types of buildings we're doing. Also, Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department cannot. Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Board has agreed to uh, relinquish this to CUD. They've actually traded some, some areas. Uh, and uh, it is pending before the City Council tomorrow night for them to uh, accept the um, Water and Sewer Board's recommendation. Okay. Thank so you. we've got that issue squared away now, and we're comfortable. Also, uh, just as a matter of um, information, the developers have agreed to uh, 
uh, install or pay for a um, emergency backup generator in the pump station that this um, uh, property will, will sewer into so that to make sure that it won't be overwhelmed. <coughs> so they're, they're participating in upgrading the infrastructure. And also, uh, the plans do clearly show the road improvements. They are consistent with what I felt they are, are uh, obligated to do. I think they um, stayed upon it, they costed it out, and they realized that it was the right thing to do, and they're willing to do what staff had uh, requested that they do. And the gap of the sidewalks, I think that's very appropriate. Uh, the, in front of the two houses, excuse me, Ms. Ely, what they're going to do, between these two, in these, front of these two houses, they're going to leave those sidewalks out. I think everybody, including the residents of those lots, uh, as well as the developers here, know that it's just a matter of time till we see a redevelopment plan to change that from our residential use. After all, those two houses are sandwiched between, well, if this happens, an apartment complex and a bank right across the road from a TSC uh, with a road that can handle commercial traffic. And so it's just a matter of time until we see that application. So with that being the case, we think that it's probably best to let a future developer build the sidewalks because they're going to tear them up when they redevelop the site. And it may be some period of time, but it's just a matter of time. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? <clears throat> There's no other questions or comments. We're ready for a motion. One, one last comment. Yes, I think just to be on the safe side, uh, in regards to Mr. Dooley's fence, because I think that was the last issue uh, that was a little bit uh, wasn't in the program book, I think it would be prudent if you are going to make a motion in favor of this to include that into the motion and, and to uh, work with the staff and neighbor on the fencing over here. Uh, we heard from the property owner and what he wants, but I think once they get out in the field, they can they can make that as an adjustment very easily. Yep, there seems to be an interest in working that out. Mr. Dooley's fence is the chain link fence, where the other fence is the PVC fence. That's right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I, I would make a motion uh, to approve this uh, zoning request. Um, and add the uh, requirement for Mr. Dooley's chain link fence and to let staff work out uh, with the developer in regards to the uh, whether the fence would wrap around Mr. Landrum's property or not. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. The next public hearing scheduled this evening is a zoning request for a PRD amendment of approximately 4.95 acres, zone PRD, located along River Bend Drive. Landmark Homes is the developer. Ms. Ely. Thank you, Chairman Lamb, Planning Commission members. Thank you again. You have before you a request to amend the zoning for a property located along the southern side of River Bend Drive, west of North Thompson Lane. This property is 4.95 acres and it's currently under construction and it's called the Riverbend Park Townhomes. The properties to the north, to the east, and to the west are zoned RS15, which is for single family purposes, and city single family subdivisions are located with this, within this area. The properties to the south are zoned LI, Light Industrial District, and also RS15, and that's the location of the Stones River National Battlefield property. The request to amend this PRD zone is to allow the construction of single-story units in addition to the two- and three-story units that are currently available on the site. The proposed one-story products have a minimum of 2,016 square feet, and that excludes the bonus room. And the footprint of this one-story product is two feet wider than the present products that are being constructed in the development. This change requires an amendment to the zoning plan because the current PRD requires each unit to be a minimum of 2,600 square feet. And um, this change will potentially affect 11 of the total of 25 units. Seven of the units have currently been constructed as two-story units, and the remaining seven units will need to be built as three-story products because of the existing elevation. The applicant did hold a public hearing, or did hold a neighborhood meeting on Wednesday, March 25th at the sales office in the development. Planning staff was present for that. You have on your desk some letters from concerned residents and neighbors, and you also have letters from potential buyers. Also included in your agenda packets were a folder given by the applicant providing more information on the project. 
Materials on the left side of the folder are what the applicant is proposing, and the materials to the right are the existing products. Many questions were asked at the neighborhood meeting regarding the proposed structure's architecture and the footprint and various other questions. In addition to the materials that you have before you, the applicant gave me yesterday afternoon a rendering of three one-story products side by side. And so if the overhead projector is put up on the screen, then you will be able to see this product. You have in your packets a uh, rendering of four units with two two-story in the middle and then one story on each end. I know that there's much concern with the architecture and how the buildings will lay out if they are two feet wider. Uh, Mr. Wisniewski is here this evening. He doesn't have a presentation, but he's available for any questions you may have. Staff recommends you conduct a public hearing now to consider amending this PRD zone, plain residential zone, and then forward your recommendation to council. If you have any questions either before or after the public hearing, Mr. Aylott and I would like to answer them for you as well. Any questions for Ms. Ailey? I, I do. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Is this the one-story elevation? Yes. I also, in addition to putting it on the overhead, I've put one on your desks. I printed it out and put it on there. I'm sorry. I forgot. In your, in your folders, the black folders, there's an 8.5 by 11 rendering that looks very similar. It's a black and white drawing that shows the two stories in the middle and the end caps being single story. The applicant hasn't um, committed to... Um, any sort of or specifying each unit saying which one could possibly be one story or which one could be two story it could be a mixture and so I think that he gave us this to show that um, another prospect but he, this doesn't by any way indicate that he is wanting to limit those three units to one story so and then I know that there are questions regarding that as well Okay. Would the applicant like to make any comments before we open the public hearing? Chairman Lamb and Planning Commission, thank you for hearing this request. Um, I apologize. I didn't uh, bring a fancy PowerPoint like um, my predecessor did, but if I'm okay to use this overhead, I could point out some things that the request uh, is considering. Every name. I'm sorry. Gary Wisniewski with Landmark Homes. The request that you have before you is to go ahead and allow single-story units to be built here at Riverbend Park in addition to the two-story units and the three-story that we already have in our portfolio. The reason for the request is because of the request from customers that we are seeing, and it's, it's approximately 90% that are coming in looking for a single-story unit. We don't have those available, and to bring that square footage down, we need to amend the PRD requirements that we have at 2,600 feet. Thank you. The only units that would be affected by the one story, uh, possibly affected by the one story, would be the ones that you see here outlined in the gold and of course we don't know if they would be one or two story that would be depending upon the the buyers and if they would choose um, either one or two story as far as the fit on the footprint when we analyzed it uh, early this morning the way it's originally proposed units number six nine twelve thirteen and sixteen are already at thirty four feet wide the only two that would need to amend that building envelope would be unit number 11 and unit number 9 because they are a 30 foot unit. In your packets, you have the single story units that are proposed showing the 34 foot wide footprint. There are three proposed units, two are end units, one with a side entry, one with a front entry, and one middle unit. As I stated, if they were all 
uh, single story. The only thing that would be affected would be those two units that I described. Um, the thing that, that we are willing to do is to put a combination of them, if we put them up speculatively, of ones and twos, as shown in your packet also. Ms. Ely uh, was so kind to put up the three building, or the three unit building with all single story, and the other one that you had in your packet was a combination. It was a fourplex with the two middle units being a two story and the very uh, outside units being your single story. And that is the uh, proposed elevation of the uh, uh, the fourplex building with the two middles being two-story and the two ends being the single story. The fit and finish of all the units will stay the same with the combination of brick, stone, hardy plank, and architectural shingles that are at the project right now. Um, thanks for taking my request, and I'm open to questions. Any questions? Mr. Wineski, you're asking for a total, a maximum of 11 single story, and you're, you're telling us that it may not end up being 11 single story. It could end up being a combination of two story. Uh, yes, single, that's but, correct. But no more than 11. That's correct. <clears throat> what percentage would that be of the total development? The entire development is 25 units, so it would be approximately 40 percent. That could be possibly single story. That would leave the, let's see, three, five, seven that are already built that are two story, and the ones on the river, uh, because they are basement lots, would, would have to stay with the three story, and that would be seven units also. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> this time I'll open the public hearing, ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak either for or against this proposal. Good evening, Mr. Chair uh, and Commission. I'm Don Witherspoon. I uh, live in River Bend on Shannon Drive. Uh, I have been the, the uh, president of the Riverbend Homeowners Association. Uh, I am no longer in that role. I am on their board of directors, but I am not here on, uh, on their behalf. I am here as an individual homeowner. Um, my wife and I and some others attended the so-called community meeting that was, that was uh, planned uh, last week. Uh, we, we were a little concerned because there was not very much publicity of, on this, and, w and we feel there might have been uh, more people in attendance if, if more people had known about it. In fact, we learned at that meeting that the people who lived in the, in the, in the division themselves, uh, the townhomes, uh, had not been advised of that meeting, and, and, I, and we feel that, that the developer was remiss in, you know, in this area. <clears throat> I was the president of the Homeowners Association when this, uh, when this PRD was, was proposed, and I worked with Gary Wisniewski, the developer, and others in the Homeowners Association. I think that Gary has turned out a, a, a pretty good product, or actually a very good product for what, you know, what they are doing there. My concern here is that you approved, and we also as a homeowners association approved, a development that we knew exactly what it was going to look like. We hear now that there are 11 units in this development and we're not sure what they're going to look like. We were told at the meeting that, that uh, tonight we would see a rendering as to exactly how this would look. I have not seen that. If I missed it, you know, excuse me, but I, to this day, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. My concern is that, is that here we have approved a development with a certain amount of square footage. We no longer have that in, in this proposal, and I believe it would diminish the value of that development and, in turn, the value of the development of River Bend, which, which adjoins it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weatherspoon. Anybody else? <coughs> Good evening, Chairman Lamb and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Bill Huddleston. My wife, Laurie, and I reside at 2357 River Terrace Drive. This is Unit 5 
in the Riverbend townhomes. Uh, Ms. Ely, I don't, do you have a, a layout of the townhomes here? Mm-hmm. Would you have a, on a board? Or? All right, we are the uh, northern, we are at the edge of the northern boundary of this proposal uh, where he's showing the 11 units that could be single story units. We come here tonight to ask you. Why don't you point out which one is that, Mr. Okay. Thompson, please? We are in, in that unit right there. Thank you. So we are in, literally within a few feet of, of this proposal. We come here tonight to ask you not to recommend this amendment to City Council because we believe, and we, we believe this pretty strongly, that it will impact our property value. I think you were told uh, a week ago that, uh, that this amendment would not affect our property value, but we strongly disagree with that. We paid... Uh, well into 400,000 uh, for our unit, and now these units are uh, reducing down to 2,016 square foot minimum, as uh, the developer told us the other night in the neighborhood meeting, would be sold in the 200s. So to say that would not impact our property value, I think, is not true. You were also told that night that these single-story units could be placed on the uh, on the two-story footprint. And we started doing the math on this and trying to figure out how in the world they could get 2,016 square foot on the same footprint. And when we figured out that they couldn't, it was only then that uh, the developer uh, conceded that, yes, we're going to have to increase uh, the footage, the width of these units, two feet, in order to uh, install them. Now, that two feet doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you look at uh, the layout of this development um, and you start adding two feet to a few of these units uh, up to 11, although tonight we've been told that that number would be less, even if you added it to five of the units, there's no place to put the, that extra 10 feet. Uh, he's showing uh, 20 feet between the uh, four unit buildings and the three unit buildings and that was a dimension agreed to uh, as we understand, during the original PRD process and some of the neighbors who attended uh, the neighborhood meeting the other night uh, thought that to be a very important dimension to them. They did not want to see that dimension, that dimension reduced. The developer has committed to holding the north wall of Unit 6 where it is on this, on this site plan so that he, he wouldn't be moving that north wall uh, e either one or two feet closer to our unit. So that means all of this expansion is going to have to take place headed south. But I beg you that there is no way that, we, that I can tell or you can tell what the effect of this is going to be without seeing a two-scale site plan. I have a feeling the developer realizes that as well because uh, my wife was alarmed that there were surveying crews running around our property today trying to figure out what's out there, and I, I assured her that, that that's not a problem. Survey crews are okay <laughs> in general. I don't think you can add these two-story units in any width to those units without losing a unit. Or two. Um, as Mr. Witherspoon said, there was a neighborhood meeting the other night, although nobody in my in the development uh, were asked were invited to attend. Um, also, know that Mike Ushery, who I think you remember, was very interested in this development before, uh, was out. Of, he was out, out of town for that uh, meeting and could not be here tonight. Uh, but he has com expressed concern over this situation and, and would like some input uh, at some point if, if you feel that's appropriate. At that public meeting, we asked the developer uh, to 
make some minor adjustments to this plan to see if if uh, if there's any way that uh, this thing could be more palatable to the residents. And we, and we didn't think we were asking anything anything too difficult to attain, but he was definitely not in a compromising mood. One thing we asked him, and, and, and we feel very strongly about this because we're so worried about the property value, is if there's something he can put in the restrictions to not allow rentals of these units. Uh, that's something that uh, other developers in, in the city have, have proposed to do through the PRD process, and we think that would be something he could do uh, to try to ease our fears about uh, the property value situation, but he, but he refused to do it at that time. Another thing we asked him, which we think would be a very simple uh, adjustment to this plan, is, is for Unit 6, the one that's, very, that's closest to us, we asked that there not be a side entrance to, the, to that unit. Uh, it, could, it, ought, it ought to be accessed from the front and the rear just like all the other existing units are, and we ask that there not be a side access. I think you'll see from these new uh, layouts that some side accesses were proposed, but we don't want a side access coming right out into our back porch. Another very simple, um, and I will move along, I apologize, but another very simple thing we asked him to do is provide uniform doors like he's put on our unit and the model unit beside us. Another very simple thing that could try to help hold up property values, but he wouldn't do it. We asked him to provide final course of paving and limit construction traffic in front of our units. Again, he wouldn't do it. Um, we asked him if he'd turn over the homeowners association to the homeowners uh, with uh, something less than 100 percent. He's going to hold on to that homeowners association until every unit is sold, and we're asking him to turn it over after 75 or 80 units are, are sold, but he, but he refuses to do that as well. We were greatly concerned about the look of this thing, and he did commit that night to saying, okay, uh, I will only have single-story units at the ends of the two four-story building, four-unit buildings, and also in the middle three-unit buildings. So instead of 11 that he's talked about tonight, he committed to us that he would only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those units single story. And I would hope that he would adjust his proposal to abide by that commitment. We still think that the three-unit building that is between the two four-unit buildings would look a little silly if it was all single story between buildings that had two-story uh, units in that. Someone commented today that it looked like a photo mat booth in the middle of one of the alleys on the public square. The, the rendering you have tonight I don't believe is to scale it, it, and I would like to see a two scale rendering and I hope you would too. That roof looks awfully high and it doesn't match the roof situation that we have in the units that are existing. Mr. Chairman, we bought into a planned unit development. It's a planned unit development for two-story and three-story units committed to by this developer, committed to by you, the Planning Commission, and committed by the City Council. And we respectfully ask that you hold up those commitments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Anybody else? My name is Marilyn Newsom, and I am the listing agent for the development of River Bend Park. And I want to tell you thank you for my input, uh, Chairman Lamb and members of the Planning Commission. I know that one of the concerns of the homeowners are that if we do build, if we are fortunate enough to try to reach the market and come up or, or accept some new plans. We're not asking to take away from the project with existing plans. We're just adding, asking to add three more plans because so many of the people that have come through love the development, love the look but they feel like that they can't negotiate stairs and, and most of them are empty nesters and this is what the market's asking for. I know that the adjoining neighborhood and the people in the development already, property values is their number one concern. 
So I looked today and pulled up some comparables. In River Bend proper, the adjoining neighborhood, last year in 2008, homes sold from 240000 to 895000 They sold from $81 a foot to 147 a foot. So there's a big swing in property values in every neighborhood. Then looking at the, the property uh, that we are talking about tonight, the active listings, we have three that are active, and the average per foot is 130, 130 I'm sorry, not 130000 $130 per foot. The sold listings, which we have four, the average per foot is 144 the proposed new buildings, which would start at, start at 2,100 square feet, would start approximately at 275,000. Now when you deal with these type of units, most everyone wants to customize and personalize. So that's a starting price. That works out to $130 a foot. So really, in no way is the price per foot being affected by accepting these new floor plans. We're just trying to meet the needs of the market. Thank you, Ms. Houston. <clears throat> Chairman Lamb, mem members of the Planning Commission, I'm Mark Lee with Site Engineering Consultants. Uh, I would like to point out we, we have revised our site plan. It's nothing that's been submitted, but uh, just wanted to check a few things, make sure everything would work fine um, and w would be no problems. Uh, code requires that uh, these units be at least 10 feet apart. Um, and we have uh, the three buildings being separated by 13.8 feet apart. Uh, on each end, the buildings would be, from the existing buildings, 11.71 feet from the existing buildings. So we are in excess of uh, what code requires. Um, if you have any other questions, um, my, my plan is all marked up, but or I'd circulate it. Uh, like I said, I don't think you all have this because we just we just did this today just to make sure went out and surveyed, make sure we had what we were providing was correct information. So uh, we're, uh, we have confirmed that what, what is, uh, Mr. Wisniewski is proposing will, will work just fine. Thank you. I, I would rather the staff have the opportunity to go through those uh, plans before we see those. So. Sure. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. though. Thanks for letting us know you have that. Anybody else? Nobody coming forward. I'll close the public hearing. Comments from our Mr. Adelot. Do you have anything you'd like to bring up first? Yes, sir. There, there's a couple of things. The PD process is designed to, in, in many respects, to help us to achieve a, a more known uh, entitlement for a developer. When they come to us, they come with with we hope with a plan that's clear that we can explain to the neighbors so we know what we're regulating so that you know what you're approving and the neighborhood knows what it's getting. Uh, that's what we endeavor to do. Uh, and that's what I think everybody agreed with with the original uh, PUD or the planned residential development that's, that's in effect right now. Uh, I certainly could explain it, and I think that you all felt you could too. One of the, the problems, however, is when times change and you need to make an amendment to the plan development. And, and the concern is that there's, there's everybody that participated in the first time, uh, they, they feel that if there's a change and they don't participate completely, uh, they might be left out. So that's, that's one of the pitfalls in the process. And, then, and inevitably there will change, be changes. And although it's on a different scale, I want to point out Indian Hills plan development. Uh, it started back... Uh, when I first got here back in the very early 80s, and, and it was going before that as something else. Uh, and during my tenure here, I guess we've seen about five, six, seven different amendments to the plan development over the years. 
and, and it's been a large plan development. We haven't seen many lately, although we saw a piece taken out of it with the um, commercial fringe lot recently. But uh, that's just normal with zoning. There will be changes and adjustments. Um, one of the things that I want to be careful of is that when we do see these changes come, that we, we allow the people who, who want to participate to participate. And, and in, my, in, in my, my heart, I feel that that somehow got missed a little bit here. Uh, when I became aware that Mr. Huddleston had not found out about the uh, neighborhood meeting until that morning, I, I just had that bad feeling in my stomach that someone who, who wanted to be participating, who uh, is now very much invested in this project, uh, found out about it at the last minute. And that's, that's distressing to me. And, and, and I can't help it, but that's what, what happened. Um, so I think that it, it may be prudent that we defer action to let the uh, applicant do a couple of things. Number one, I think he really does owe it to all the neighbors who, who live in the neighborhood now to have a chance to participate. Uh, Mr. Ussery did send me an email, and I forwarded it to you all. Uh, and he asked that he have a chance to learn more about it. He was not able to be at the neighborhood meeting. I found that out. He sent me the email. He's been in touch with me to, to just let me know that he, he would really like to know. And, and you remember, Mr. Usfrey vigorously participated in the first process. It's, it's right on his property line. The uh, neighbors who are directly adjacent to these units, they were at the neighborhood meeting. They had questions. They had concerns. But they said they were not going to be able to be here tonight. So I, I still think that they, had they been in town, I think they probably would have been here tonight. But their, their lifestyle had caused them to be unavailable. So I, I think we ought to defer. What we ought to do is, I, I think I would like to see the plan that Mr. Lee said he prepared today. I haven't seen it. don't know what it says. I suspect what it might show, but I'd like to have a chance to review it. Uh, I think that we ought to look at the issue of this, the um, unit that might have a door into the back of Unit 6. Uh, when all the units in the plan are to have a front entrances and now there's a possibility of having a side entrance that will now be in somebody's back door that's already there, that, that needs to ha we need to have another look at that. We need to take a real careful look because that goes against the, the fabric of the original plan. Uh, also, these, these exhibits that they've got, we can, we can tell a whole lot about them, but then uh, we also have to have a little bit of imagination. And I think, I think we might need to see a, a little bit more detail. I'd like to see a full size one. I'd like to see some explanation of these. Uh, I'm not saying I want to go back and recreate their development. That's not what I mean at all. But I would like to be able to see what the new ones look like a little bit better. Uh, I do have these 11 by 17s, but uh, I still, they're still conceptual. I'd like to see a little bit better rendered. And I think it would be prudent for Mr. Wisniewski to invest in that. So uh, I would ask that you defer action, and I will endeavor to work with Mr. Wisniewski. It may be possible that we can have him back on the agenda in two weeks, although since that's a day meeting and it's not a televised meeting, it may be better that we wait for one month uh, and be back in the first meeting in May. Mr. Young. I have a question, Mr. Daylock. There was some talk about a possibly 11 units and then possibly 7 units. Would, would a PUD spell that out? Well, that's, that's something I want a little bit of clarity on. The, if he's going to make an amendment and he's willing to make specific commitments on his amendment and he's only going to be changing seven of the units, uh, well, that, that, or, or rather only seven of them are going to be single story, I think that probably ought to be spelled out. Because I don't want to have an argument with him later on and him saying, well, you approved them all to be one story. And I'm saying, no, I thought you said, and, and, and I don't want to have that argument, so I think it would be best to have that spelled out. Mr. lot I agree with you. There's too many questions right now pertaining to what is actually being proposed here and, and what could finally be built there. So I think we need some time for the staff to work with the developer and the developer to work with interested parties, such as the people that have already bought into the development and also the neighbors in River Bend itself, uh, time to communicate and hopefully come to a meeting of the minds between themselves before uh, it comes back before us again. So I concur with you as far as a deferral. I think that would be appropriate. Chairman Lamb, one, one more thing for the Planning Commission. I want, I want to talk a little bit more global here. Uh, as the uh, city's planning director, I have a unique perspective where I see what's happening with developments that a lot of people in the community don't. And what I'm seeing is that the development communities, and what I would consider to be a little bit of a turmoil in the sense that there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen 
with some of the developments that two years ago were very certain. Uh, Three Rivers being one of the planned developments out there that uh, I think we've, we've seen things in the newspaper, some notices, we've had discussions that cause us to think we may see at some time in the future somebody wanting to make some changes to it. And, and, and I give it as an example, not necessarily a specific. And, and that happens, and I think you may have read in my earlier remarks that that might be the case. When that happens, I think that we have an obligation to be careful, to be, not to be in any kind of a hurry, and I want to advise the applicants of that, that they need to be prepared to meet, have extra meetings, uh, and be prepared for deferrals if that's the case. So going into the process, if they're wanting to make changes, they know that the Planning Commission is going to achieve it fine, that they're going to make a very considered, very deliberate, very careful recommendation to the council. And, and this is the, uh, maybe the first, that while this may not be a, uh, a distressed subdivision, we may see some others in the future that might be, that we will have someone want to make some changes for, for whatever reason. They may be in a hurry, but I'm going to prepare them. Do you need to be very careful, very considered, uh, very deliberate in your process? Mr. Chairman, Ms. Datelot's insight about the, the changes of the climate of development in the existing PUDs is very accurate. We're going to see more and more of this down the road, and, and we must keep an open mind and be flexible. At the same time, we need to uh, let our, the community, development community, know that there's possibilities for changes, but it, it will be uh, well done. Uh, so I think we need to be aware that down the road we're going to see more applications for changes in, and then we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, without further ado, I'll move for deferral. Motion is made to second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. The third and final public hearing of the evening is a proposed update amendments to the zoning ordinance. Mr. Adelot, I presume you'll make that presentation? Um, yes, sir, I am, and um, I'm going to uh, have a handout for you. Um, Ms. Uh, Ely is handing out to you a uh, copy of the proposed amendments in ordinance form. Uh, the version that uh, you had in your materials was the bullet list that the uh, plan staff had prepared. What you're receiving is a uh, ordinance form uh, that the uh, legal department has prepared. There is no substantive changes between the two. What we uh, are doing with that is looking at some amendments to the zone ordinance that have to do with um, uh, what I consider to be minor changes but important changes. These uh, have to do with some uh, what I also consider dangling and loose ends. Uh, the ordinance um, that you have before you, and I'm going to read from the, uh, probably from the ordinance part primarily, but uh, what it does is it helps with some of our definitions uh, that we have where either the definitions uh, need to be updated to be consistent with state law or the definitions need to be updated to be consistent with other provisions that have since been adopted uh, or the revision definition just needs to be deleted as in the case of a, a couple of them. Uh, a couple of items are defined and still need to be defined, but they were not shown to be uses listed in chart uh, one, which is our uses permitted chart. So we felt that we needed to list them because of the, the concern by, that I have uh, come to have, that if you define it as a use, you need to define it where it is permitted. Otherwise, it could be construed as to be committed, permitted anywhere. So uh, that's the case with um, one of the uses. Uh, we've also done some updating where we uh, uh, have changed some of our um, regulations. For instance, in uh, 1973, we had a document that was called the Murfreesboro Area Transportation Plan uh, or Urban Transportation Plan. And um, it was superseded by the Major Street Plan, which was superseded by the Major Thoroughfare Plan, which we currently have. Well, about a, about a dozen places through there, we still refer to the old Murfreesboro area uh, transportation plan. And uh, since it's been gone since about 1978 and, and no longer is a document that is uh, in use, I thought it was time that we no longer refer to it. So it's a little bit of updating in that regard. Uh, also, uh, there are some uses that are um, in our Section 9. And this Section 9, we did quite a bit of change in there. 
Uh, Section 9 deals with the, the additional standards for uses permitted by special use permit. These are the uses that the Board of Zone Appeals has authority to approve, subject to an application being made. Those uh, uses require certain standards to be met. What uh, we did was to divide each use. Some of them were, uh, in one case, we had seven uses under one uh, number. So uh, we, we divide them into their separate numbers. And then we um, did some updating so that they would each have their own standards. Uh, we deleted one. For instance, we don't want to have a pulp mill in our city. I don't think that we want to have a very... Uh, a, a kind of use that has a very strong odor in, a, in an urban area like Murfreesboro. Pulp mills uh, have their place, but I don't believe they have their place in Murfreesboro. So we deleted it completely. Uh, I don't think they could locate here even if they wanted to, but we just made sure that they can't. Uh, th we um, did a little updating to alphabetize these, and that's a uh, that was a major ordeal for me because uh, when you try to alphabetize these things and then make it clear what you're doing, uh, and then try to add a reserve uh, capacity in there. You'll notice that on page uh, 7, uh, it goes into every other one is a reserve provision. Well, our uh, city attorney wants to be prepared that in the future when we, we adopt new uses, if and, in, if and when we ever do, we won't have to go back and re-alphabetize them, that we'll just be able to take some of those reserve spaces and make them into the, the uses. Uh, we uh, changed some of the... Uh, References to our uh, floodplain regulations. The uh, sections of our zone ordinance that dealt with floodplain regulations were in section 23 and 24. Uh, two or three years ago, we updated that to delete sections, those sections from 23 and 24, and add them to their own section that deals with the, the floodplain regulations. At the same time, we also took out the word flood, uh, uh, well, we changed the word flood, floodway. Uh, and floodway fringe. Actually, we deleted floodway fringe. It became special flood hazard area. So we updated the zoning ordinance to take care of all those changes. So what you see here uh, are a lot of um, mundane changes, but they're important because it's important that our ordinance uh, be um, have the correct uh, uh, provisions. I will be glad to answer your questions. I'm confident that you've had a chance to look these over in the uh, version that was handed out to you in your, your uh, materials. Um, I have carefully reviewed this with our legal staff. Um, I have reviewed it. I, well, I spent a better part of a month on it myself. Um, but um, I think that this is something we need to move forward with. We need to conduct a public hearing, and then I'll, I will answer more questions if you have them, and then you need to formulate a recommendation to our city council. Mr. Adelot, I know this was staff driven and I want to thank you and the staff. I know it took quite a few hours to laboriously go through all of those documents and then for Mr. Ives to put his blessings on them. So there's a lot of work in that and I appreciate you guys doing that because that is very time consuming and I know your your days get somewhat stretched. Uh, any questions from Mr. Adelot before we open the public hearing? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody here that would like to come forward to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Any comments from members of the Planning Commission? Mr. Aitlott, is there any other forbidden uses other than pulp mills? Uh, no, that's the only one we said we don't want at all. We took that now completely. About nuclear power plants or? Uh, uh, no, uh, you know, we, we struggled with storage. some of the things like uh, radioactive materials. Well, certainly, we don't want to have storage and distribution of radioactive materials. That's not permitted. But we don't want to allow a dentist from having an x-ray machine. So we've left provisions for them to be able to do that. <coughs> but but we, we don't want to have uh, something like a, a place where they're handling it for um, um, creating power or something like that that's not going to be permitted. If there's no other questions, we're ready for a motion. Being none, Mr. Chairman, I recommend that we set up a uh, recommend approval. Motion is made for approval and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That concludes the public hearing portion of our agenda this evening. One item under plats and plans, that being Joseph King's site plan for 718 square feet on .22 acres zone residential duplex located along North Church Street, Joseph King is developing. 
Good evening, Ms. Logan. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. Um, the site plan before you tonight is to convert an existing garage located at 718 North Church mm -hmm. Street into a one-bedroom um, unit. This is permitted under our zoning ordinance, but the Planning Commission must approve multiple dwellings on one lot. It does meet the minimum requirements for square footage and the minimum require requirements for lot square footage. It's um, being currently used as a rental property. It's an investment property that's being used for rental, and the owner would like to take the um, existing garage and convert it into a residence. Staff has reviewed the plans, and there weren't um, very many comments that came back, but we would just like to state um, emphatically that the uh, drainage on that site, um, this site is very flat and when garages are built sometimes the finished floor elevation is not the same as what you would have a finished floor elevation at when you go and build the primary residence um, and sure. that there could be um, that the, the structure could be um, subject to localized flooding drainage issues down the road and that the city will not be responsible for that it will be an owner created um, situation and we just want to make sure that that is very clear and in the record. Otherwise, we don't have any additional comments. Any questions? Ready for a motion. Move for approval, subject staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Logan. Staff reports and other business. Mr. Adelot. I'm done. Thank you. There's no other business. We stand adjourned. <laughs>